Hi everyone, bonjour à tous, this is Romy. Welcome to my show dedicated to altering and transforming your old clothes. I hope this new video will inspire you to give a second life to pre-loved garments by making them more attractive, more fitted, more up-to-date and more fun. Today is part 3 of the simple refashion of an old polka dot dress. I found it in a second-hand shop for about $3. Both classic and timeless, I hope you'll love the cut of our new dress. Let's get started! C'est parti! In the previous episodes, which I highly recommend you watch first if you didn't get the chance to yet, we did cut the dress in half in order to create a perfectly fitted corsage, we worked on making a flowy skirt and we reattached both parts together. Today we will focus on creating the straps and make a beautiful neckline finish. First, measure how long the straps need to be. The former collar of the dress will be long and wide enough, plus it has two sides which will be perfect for two straps. So I quickly cut around this collar, saving as much fabric as possible, and I get rid of the old inner facing before properly ironing my fabric. Just for your information, my straps need to be 35 cm long, so 37 cm width seam allowance, and 1.5 cm wide, so that's about 4 cm before folding and sewing, which I'll show you right now. So fold and pin both straps lengthwise, with the fabric placed right sides together. At about 5 mm from the edge, we will make a row of straight stitches. To make it easier, grab your threads and pull them as you start sewing. Don't forget either to make a few back stitches to start and finish, it will secure your seam. Oh and before I forget, the width you need to cut for your straps equals 2 times the desired finished width plus 1 cm, 2 times 5 mm, for your seam allowance. When you are done, turn your straps inside out. Wow! <laughs> Hmm, I'm afraid this is no magic wand, but a simple chopstick, which will come in handy for the task. To really grasp this process, I recommend you watch my tote bag tutorial, in which I filmed it in detail. The link is in the description box. Also, I take this opportunity to ask you all what technique you're using. I would love to find something faster and a little bit more convenient. When the straps are on the right side, let's iron them flat and make a mark on each side to delimit the desired length, which is 35 cm for me. Here we are, the marks are done, let's keep the straps on the side until we are done with the finish of the neckline. If you have enough fabric left from the dress, you could of course make an inner facing using the pattern we made in the first episode. Here is a quick sneak peek at how this can be done, although it isn't the technique I will use today since I don't have enough fabric left. I'm trying to play the game of clothing refashion by the rules and to not use any additional fabric, just the initial dress. So this was just a little peek at the way you could use the pattern, but we will do that um, in details another time. Today we will follow the rules and use the excess inner facing that we cut out of the skirt in the second episode. Let's get started. I align the inner facing right sides together on top of the neckline and pin it thoroughly. At the pointy head, we will need to make a dart to go on aligning the inner facing since it isn't as soft and foldable as bias. Pin the inner facing to the side and gently grab the excess fabric in order to create the dart. You can slightly move it on the side of the princess seam to avoid this place to be too thick. Rest assured though that we will thin out the fabric properly for that purpose. On the side we will need another dart. Don't try to force the inner facing to bend more than it can, just make sure it covers the neckline and that it is placed flat and without wrinkles. Then cut the excess fabric at about 2-3 to three centimeters after the middle back line and proceed to the other side. Once again, don't force the fabric to bend, but place it really flat. We will still have our softly curved line by following the basting of the neckline visible on the wrong side of the dress's main fabric. 
It really is convenient to have it appear on both sides of the fabric. At the back, pin both ends of the fabric right sides together when they meet. So here is where we are at now and I have to say that I was extremely tempted at the side of this white inner facing against the black of the dress to replace it with a pretty white color. Maybe I'll do myself this little pleasure in the future. In the meantime, I already basted the dots and will sew them with a sewing machine. Be careful not to stitch the main fabric of the dress at the same time. So I just did solid hand stitches since I didn't want to wake my baby up, but using the sewing machine is way faster here. We also need to detach and cut the excess inner facing on both sides and cut the excess fabric as well to thin out our seam and open it with an iron. When it's done for every dart, we will insert the straps between the main fabric of the dress and the inner facing, making sure to align every construction marks and other basting lines. So we will temporarily remove a few pins to accommodate the strap end between both pieces, like a sandwich, right at the pointy shape on the front. Pin everything back in place and insert the other end in the back at the seam level, for instance. After watching the end result of my dress on the screen, I realized that I probably should have moved the strap a little bit more toward the right side in the back, but the benefit of this placement is that the strap covers perfectly the strap of my bra. Anyway, let's tack the neckline. We will need to temporarily unstitch the cover stitch right here to be able to start tacking right at the very edge of the middle front line. Don't tack the fabric before that. Again, I'm using a contracting collar to baste and I will follow religiously the neckline traced with the orange thread. When the whole length will be basted, we will be able to try the dress on to check whether we are completely happy with the strap's length and then we'll stitch everything in place with the sewing machine. Don't hesitate to make a few back and forth additional stitches where the straps are inserted in the dress to make them more secure. Then cut the excess fabric at about 5 to 6 mm from the stitches and use the zigzag stitch of your sewing machine or a serger to finish the raw edges off. Voila! We will see of course how to make the finish of both ends, but before that we need to take out every basting thread and understitch our seam to hold the inner facing in place. When we fold the inner facing on the wrong side of the dress as needs to be, it wants to open up back towards the right side as you can see. A good press will help prevent it, but it isn't enough. So we are going to fold the seam on top of the inner facing and make what is called an understitch, that is a row of straight stitches right below the actual seam. Have a close look, when the inner facing will be properly folded on the inside of the garment, the understitch will indeed be below the level of the actual seam and it will hold the excess fabric inside the dress gently tackled against the inner facing. On the outside, we won't see a thing. We start under stitching from one side to the first pointy head, then between both heads and finally on the last portion. It isn't possible to sew correctly at the head's level. To easily under stitch, open properly the seam and align the groove of your presser foot with it. Then move the needle from 1 or 2 mm on the inner facing side and start sewing. When you arrive at the first head, you will feel that it is difficult to go any further. Don't force it, do a few back stitches to secure your seam and cut your thread. We will go on under stitching on the other side of the head. Be very careful, the seam must really be folded on the inner facing side for the under stitching to have a reason to be. Once you reach the other end, stop sewing at the level of the middle front line exactly and no further. And voila! It's done! Félicitations! Don't forget this technique, it's very useful and very often used.
Also, don't forget to press your work and to try the heat of your iron first. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> I'm so proud of you! Here is a pick at the inside, nice and clean. Now, as promised, let's see how to finish both ends. Cut the fabric in order to level it up with the top inner facing seam, even slightly below would be best to thin out the place a little bit. A few basting stitches will hold the front facing in place so we can tightly fold the neckline facing on top of it. We are going to cut it as well diagonally, making sure to leave a few extra millimeters after the middle front line to be able to nicely fold the fabric on itself first. Here are the few needed millimeters. Don't be afraid to thin things out even more by removing a stripe of facing. We really want this corner to be as flat as possible. I always keep within easy reach a pair of tweezers as well as embroidery scissors, they really come in handy. Voila, you can fold the edge once and then lay it flat on top of the front inner facing. Hold everything in place with a few pins and do a few invisible hand stitches. Let's get rid of the basting threads accessible on the outside of the dress and repeat the same operation on the other side. Also, a quick press will do us good. Now to be extra sure that our inner facing really stays put, we can sew it to the dress using every place where there is a seam. To do that, I pin it to the dress and fold a few millimeters of the fabric and do a few quick hand stitches. Grab the inner facing on the seam only, but stay away from the main fabric of the dress. This way the stitches will be perfectly invisible on the outside. Finally, if necessary, and it really was for me, check the hem of the skirt to make it round and harmonious. Et voilà, this is the end of this tutorial. A huge bravo to you and a big thank you for your time and your attention. To help me share our passion for sewing around, please like this video, leave me a kind comment and subscribe to the channel. It will make a big difference. Merci beaucoup. Bye bye. A bientôt.